Hello, and welcome back to The Wild Report. My name is Cleo, I'm your host, and let's see what's going on at the Wild Center this week. On August 26th, the Wild Center will be having a red carpet premiere of Wild Tales, a new behind-the-scenes documentary series that gives an inside look at the fish, otters, birds, and other creatures here at the Wild Center, while meeting the people who create a safe environment for them 24-7. Walk the red carpet, meet some of our animals, get an autograph from Ollie the Otter, and talk with our animal care staff. We're screening the first two episodes of Wild Tales, and then introducing, for the very first time in public, our newest ambassador, the Woodchuck. Red carpet animal attire is encouraged. Admission to this event includes a voucher for a daytime Wild Center visit any day from now until September 4th. In local news, this week, more than 40 artists from all across the country will be coming to Saranac Lake for the 14th annual Adirondack Plain Air Festival. There will be events such as an opening night reception and silent auction, with proceeds going to local arts programs and events. Now, let's go to Kathleen with the weather report. Today we're doing a monarch check-in for our flower discovery of the week. Here on the common milkweed that we talked about a few weeks ago, we can see a fourth instar on the top of the leaf here. Now, milkweed, if you remember, has a special chemical defense that can stop the hearts of many small vertebrates. And as a caterpillar is feeding on milkweed, not only is it getting all of its water from the leaf latex, but it gets its beautiful coloration and its own defense from those chemicals too. It's warning predators not to mess with this caterpillar. Because if a bird tries to eat them, they'd get sick. If we look closely at those long whip-like tentacles near the head, that tells me that this might be a young fifth instar. Now, instar is the stage of life for a caterpillar. As it gets bigger, it will molt its skin in order to grow. So a caterpillar for monarch butterflies will molt five times before making a chrysalis to become a butterfly. So this one is almost ready. Now, since monarchs are endangered species as of this year, it's important that we protect the food sources that they need to survive. Here on this common milkweed, not only do we have a beautiful, large fifth instar chewing on a leaf, but we can see its frass, or the waste a caterpillar produces, that can show us that, hey, there's a caterpillar nearby. Milkweeds are neighborhoods, essentially. There are many kinds of insects that make milkweed their homes. Look at those bright red insects climbing up and down the stalk there. That is a milkweed beetle. Seeing them is a great sign for your pollinator garden's health. This is a milkweed bug. Just like before, that coloration is a warning for any predator that you'll get an upset stomach if you mess with this insect. I'm taking these two caterpillars to our monarch nursery so that we can raise them, make sure that they're fed and protected from disease and predators, and then we'll tag them once they are full butterflies so that scientists can track where they are found, how far they get on their large migration yeah. journey. This is our monarch nursery where we're helping to raise uh, monarch caterpillars, give them a safe place to build their chrysalises, and then tag the adult butterflies after they eat clothes so that scientists can track where they end up. Let's just gently place the caterpillar. You can see all the other caterpillars munching away on the milkweed. And a fifth instar caterpillar, same as the one I just put in and most of our caterpillars right now, can go through two big old milkweed leaves in a day. In this week's viral animal video, a coyote and a badger are caught on a security camera together appearing to be friends. Let's see what our animal care staff has to say. It's like a young coyote. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's such a short clip, it's hard to say. Oh, a couple of pounds. 
He looks like he's waiting for him to to come around and the corner. And then they're following each other. Yeah, yeah I mean, but yeah, just the <clears throat> body language of but, the yeah. coyote looks loose and yeah. what I would attribute to play. Yeah, I mean, but he even did be almost the, like a a play bow in yep, the beginning. Yeah. But what would be the uh, benefit? Yeah, like we research. we know ravens, like especially out west, mm -hmm. will often alert predators when mm -hmm. there's a prey animal around because it behooves them to do so. The predators mm -hmm. will go kill the prey and then they get the scraps. Yeah. Is, is there yeah. something like that happening here? I don't know. For this week's animal check-in, let's check in with the Wild Center's fish. Hi folks, curator Leah Valerio here at the Wild Center and today we're going to talk about fish. In particular, we're going to talk about sturgeon, lake sturgeon. We have two lake sturgeon that call the Wild Center home, and they are a species of fish that are very ancient. And what I mean by that is they evolved a long time ago and their body shape and everything about them has stayed the same. They're actually a member of the scaleless fish order. They don't have scales like other fish. They're more like sharks. They have skin and they're bottom feeders. So they do a really important job in especially Lake Champlain where they eat all the stuff that falls to the bottom and they help keep all of the dead fish and all that kind of stuff off the bottom of the lake. So they're really cool fish. Last week's trivia question was, what percentage of the world's fish are freshwater fish? The answer is 50%, despite freshwater only making up 3% of the world's water supply. Today's trivia question is, what is the name of the Wild Center's woodchuck? Put your answers in the comments below and check back next week for the correct answer. That's all for now. Have a great week and don't forget to stay wild.